bit of a blast from the past. And I was looking at the events of recent weeks, in fact, well, I don't know, the last year or two. Um, and we've had a lot of things happen, uh, even just the last 24 hours. Auckland City Council has voted, yeah, that's a democratic process, people, has voted not to have special Māori wards. Only one vote in it. But uh, everyone's screaming racism about that. But the councillors, as elected through a democratic process, had their own democratic process and decided, no, we want to keep democracy. We don't want to have ethnically uh, divided uh, democracy in this country. And they listened to the submission, so that was the vote. So that's an Auckland City issue. We are, of course, at a nation at an interesting uh, place as um, National decides whether it's going to need Winston Peters as well as ACT to um, form uh, the new government and to do a coalition deal. But it is going ahead with its law and order issue. And Minister of Police uh, looks like uh, the new or the uh, not incumbent, what is he? The Minister of Police uh, elect Mark Mitchell is going to be a busy guy. And I thought, geez, who? And also, I think there's been some interest in the media and the media's response to their mates losing the election, the mainstream media. So I thought, who could talk about all that? Who would have some perspective and some experience of this? Well, probably the, what you'd want is. A guy who used to be Minister of Police and has been in Parliament. Yeah, this guy ticks that box. Oh, what about a guy that's also been the Mayor of Auckland? Ticks that box. And a guy that's been a talkback media host. Yeah, ticks that box. So we are now joined um, by Banksy. Uh, John Banks, former Minister of the Crown, former Mayor of Auckland, former talkback radio host. John, how nice to have you with us. Uh, very, very good and so gracious of you and a great introduction, I must say, Shawnee, and uh, pleased to be with you. Uh, uh, that You are the last bastion of free speech uh, in this politically correct, woke, emerging third world outfit that we've been living in these last six years. So before we start, Shawnee, I think I should say RIP, Ruthless Empire. RIP, yeah. Ruthless Empire. Who represented his, his end represented everything bad, surely you're listening carefully, yeah. everything bad about where this country's arrived. Ruthless empire. He's gone, but he's not forgotten. We can't forget ruthless empire because he is a symbol. His termination, termination is a symbol of everything bad that this shocking evil government has allowed us to de send into and so the political correctness and the bullshit and the wokeness and the big spending and the big that big noting and the and the elite classes of the government and the public service must stop so we've got a new government i've been celebrating i had a celebration for two weeks that the blue tide came out and wiped out the red tide but it's not about that shawnee it's got to be about real change as soon as the last vote is counted. Real change. Yeah. And this war is not going to be about the National Party, the ACT Party and New Zealand First vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the rest across the parliament. It's going to be about the new government versus the civil service. That's where the war needs to be declared on day one versus the civil service that has allowed this country on the instructions of the elite classes in the parliament to do what they've done for us. And it's got to be over, Sean. Mm. Well, look, I'm going to be honest with you, John. I have looked at, at Luxon, who, strangely enough, won't come on this program or hasn't come on this program during the election campaign. Um, but I think there is a danger that he's a little bit of a PowerPoint sort of warrior and that he will only do what he needs to to wage the war on woke or to win the war on woke, that he might not go really as far as he needs to to really change the tide and roll things back. If he doesn't change the tide and roll things back, this country is stuck. And old white men like me, their futures are terminated. <laughs> uh, political correctness and wokeness has overcome this country to the extent where everything that moves that needs money is funded with my money, your money, the listeners' money. And listen to this, Shawnee. One of the things we've got to do, 
is stop this corrupt media in its tracks. We should not be funding these Hamas people. We should stop funding them. Why should I fund the left-wing, corrupt left-wing media in this country that is just the puppets of the elite classes who were the cabinet of this left-wing government that we've had for six years? It's but it all turn around. So I don't just want to see a change in government and nice people. Listen, I'm going to give Luxon a run because I like the cut of his jib. He needs to be substantially stiffened up. And I think that Seymour and Peters have got the steel, the rebars, to stiffen this choker up. And I think that he could be quite good. Um, uh, I, I, I I saw the way he handled the campaign and he did the right thing about by getting the votes in. He's harvested the votes. Yeah. But the war doesn't stop with the vote, Shawnee. The war stops with the change in direction of this country and it's got to be 180 degrees. Yeah. John, um, looking at how they might do a deal, and I know the media are obsessed by this, and of course they'll work it out because that's what politicians do. Now, I'm, I'm, forgive me if I, I'm wrong, you used to be one of Winston's flatmates, didn't you? Way, way back. Were you one of the boys well, in the I, flat? Well, no, no, I wasn't one of the boys in the flat, but I'm a mate of Winston's from way back. I'm yeah. still a mate of Winston's. I mean, he's an old colleague of mine. He wrote my first speech that won me selection in Mount Roskill in 1978. No. You're I'm kidding. Mount Roskill, the seat Mount Roskill, and it's a totem of everything bad about this government and everything good about the democratic election we've had. I want to I want to share with you what happened in Roskill. Roskill was a very very safe seat held by Arthur Faulkner, a great Labour man for all those years. And in '78, all those years ago, I was going to take on uh, 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 I was going to take on uh, Faulkner and win the seat. Well, I took him all right, and I fought him hard for 18 months, and I lost resoundingly. I lost resoundingly. It's a Labour Party red seat. Now, it changed at the election three weeks ago. This is how it changed. I went out to an election meeting in May Road for the ACT Party, and I turned up there, and I thought I was visiting, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 a party for uh, Indian folks, because... About 70% of the 400 people in the May Road Hall were Indian people, and most of them were business people. And 13 of their dairies and supermarkets in that Roscoe electorate had been raided by criminals, wow. smashed down, and they had themselves thieved up, and one of them was stabbed to death. One of them was stabbed to death. One of their brothers was stabbed to death. Some of their sisters and mothers were bashed in these ram raids and these kids were locked up and released again to do it again another night and these indian folk in mount roskill and they make up about 25 percent of the mount roskill electorate and they're normally labor voters said we've had a guts full we can't allow our sisters and mothers to be beaten up for this for the stealing of cigarettes in the dead of night and early morning and in the afternoon and they were frightened law and order won the day in the Mount Roskill seat, the safe Labour seat. Yeah. Or it's lack of law and order uh, at present, yeah, or the promise of restoration of law and order, I guess. 